I'm just gonna open this. Oh my gosh, guys. There! Oh, awesome! Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. What's up, my Buhai squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to another vlog here at the Mobu High Squad farmhouse. We're about to head somewhere special. Yay! We're going to um, Tagaytay to buy decor, to decorate our indoor aviary. But guys, look at this. Oh, welcome to another vlog. Look, beautiful flowers. This plant was just planted here maybe a couple weeks ago. Oh, and even this. Um, RJ really liked these flowers and this plant and look it's doing so well here it's like flowering again because there weren't this many flowers when we got it oh this is gonna do so well here it's right under the uh, rain tree the acacia so i guess it gets ample shade but also enough sunlight oh so cool guys this is our side farming lot lots of updates so you guys saw that our parrots moved from the indoor aviary to out here and they love it nice big aviary for them to do laps um and guys look at the cages oh <gasps> whoa okay so iguana pen almost done it just needs a backing now um they're gonna add that soon can't wait to move the iguanas in here this is billy's room and then this guys which kuya irvin is working on good morning is our chicken coop oh my gosh it's becoming real how many years have i been saying that i can't wait for us to have chickens as soon as this is done guys we are going to get chickens it's becoming real wow i can't wait oh my gosh we're gonna have like several chickens we're gonna collect eggs from them and they will be completely organic right <laughs> Like, we'll be feeding, we'll know what the chickens will be eating. They won't, and we, we know we're not going to be injecting them or feeding them hormones or anything like that. So that's going to be so fun. What a dream. There's RJ overseeing the chicken coop. Oh, man, this is awesome. I can't wait to come out here and get eggs. All right, guys, so we are here now in Tagaytay. Awesome, awesome plants all over. Some small trees. Let's look around. All right, so... Right now, I'm looking for really large plants that can have partial shade because the aviary is partially shady. It does get sunlight in the morning to noon, but then for the rest of the day, it's like pretty shady. So I'm looking at this Ficus elastica. See, beautiful. It's got like some red to it, deep dark green. Love it. And it's growing from a pot. Look at these tomatoes. Cute. Oh, guys, look at this. So nice. Beautiful. So nice. Gonna add this to our aviary. Um, gonna get some bird's nest fern. Guys, look at this plant. It's got pink to it. <gasps> and then, guys, look at this. Monstera. Gorgeous. It's like variegated. So pretty gonna get a few bromeliads as well to attach to the walls so what's neat is now that the parrots have moved out to their outdoor aviary for those of you who know who know parrots they like destroy plants so it was getting expensive we moved them out we're gonna have songbirds and like birds that don't really destroy plants so we can actually have a little bit more fun also we can add more a greater variety because since the birds won't eat the plants we can actually add plants that have some toxicity to them um, like we couldn't really add any toxic plants to the aviary because the birds would have eaten them um, and so that ruled out a lot of species but now that we can um, add certain toxic plants like philodendron for example it's gonna be a lot more fun I also want to add a lot more vines so we're gonna also get this species of vine for the aviary yay so guys we're getting the price of a lot of these plants and guys this is 8,000 pesos wow and then this is a smaller one for 3,000 but same kind of plant RJ likes this RJ likes unique looking things they're like snakes 
maybe that you can like psh, see. yeah maybe okay we're getting the smaller kind of that 8,000 peso one I don't mind we got all the time in the world to let this grow this baby this is cheaper it's around 3,000 pesos oh yes yes philodendron love you and our other long leaf philodendron I know it's so pretty I can't wait to grow it all of that bird's nest fern love it's guys warm. this here is ilang ilang it's like a perfume plant it smells so fragrant rj and i are talking about planting this around our enclosures like the chickens and the goats and the bunnies so it smells good and it offers some really good shade yes bird's nest fern so this plant you see it growing on our acacia trees around our home on the rain trees they um, don't like a lot of direct sunlight so if you have kind of like shadier areas or partial sunlight um, they do well they can grow in the ground or epiphytically like literally in the tree attached to a tree what I love about getting our plants from nurseries is we could bargain RJ's bargaining now RJ is so good at bartering like when we visit other countries and go to markets he is the best at bartering he'll even try to imitate their accent out like of that country and he's so good looking like especially if the vendors are women or like gay men oh my gosh rj can get the best price he uses his power as well this here is fiddle leaf fig very popular house plant because it can grow in like kind of lower light like it needs sunlight but it can tolerate like partial sun so pretty what do you guys think I mean, for a lot of it, from my understanding and experience with orchids, there it will have no flowers. But then, like, eventually they grow every now and then. But these also can be planted epiphytically. Like, see, it's soilless. They, in the wild, they grow, like where they're from, they grow epiphytically, like on the sides of, plant, of trees and rocks. Shall we try Mabuhai Squad? What do you think? What color should we choose? Oh, so gorgeous. So hard to choose. Look at these ones. They just kind of hang. You just have to attach them yourself. Me, I would attach them to a wall, to the brick wall of our aviary and have them grow. See, look at this. You can actually plant them on driftwood like that. See, and then they just grow out and then they flower every now and then. Like, see this one here? Look at this one. Cute, right? But see, again, for some of the time, they will not have flowers. But the plant itself will survive attached to whatever, like a wall or, or driftwood. And then it'll just give you flowers every now and then. Guys, look. Basil. RJ's gonna buy some. We got eggplant. Alright guys, gonna try one orchid. What to choose? Beth, you choose a color. Could be any of these, or it could be any of the hanging ones, which will attach to the wall. Or yellow. yellow. Ooh, look at that one. Or white. White is also okay. All right, we have a winner. This one. Oh, so sad. This beautiful ficus elastica, they said, has already set down its roots from the pot. Oh, no wonder it's so big. So they said they won't be able to uproot it. It'll probably die. Oh, it's, but it's perfect. Oh well, see ya. Okay, here is another ficus elastica, but, and it's fairly big, not as big as the other one that I wanted. And it's growing on a pot. So we got a truck, by the way, guys. This is our truck, because we felt like our van isn't the best at picking up things like gardening, items, random like aquariums and stuff from cardamar it's just a lot easier yay ficus elastica and andia we're happy to take you home with us omg careful this plant is gonna go for a ride i can't believe we're going to drive with it just like this omg guys nepenthes <gasps> you guys know this pitcher plants they're carnivorous so the lip of these pitcher plants have like a sweet secretion for insects that come and then they lick that lip and then they slip inside and they can't get out. There are like these in, inward pointing hairs 
that keep the insects from climbing out of the pitcher and they end up dying in that digestive fluid inside. Isn't that crazy? So this here is, these are palm fruit from a palm tree. See, it grows right there. Parrots love this stuff. Um, and in the US, it's quite expensive. Uh, it's very nutritious. It contains a lot of beta carotene, which birds really need, especially captive birds. Um, you know, it's important for their feathers, their nails, all of that. High in vitamin A. And this gentleman said, I can have that. I want to feed it to our parrots and also maybe plant some palm trees. Whoa! Wow. Oh my gosh, wow. Salamat, Kuya. Yay! I wonder if our parrots will eat it. I love how these things just grow naturally in the wild here. It's good food for our birds. Wow, lemon? Yeah. Lemon trees? Oh, cool. Wow, RJ bought a lot. A vine, a vine, sir. A vine yeah. flowering. He wants to show me what it looks like when it's an adult or when it's flowering. Oh, pretty flowers. Yeah, the outdoor aviary. Oh, yes. So nice. So we're thinking of, since it's a vining plant, we're thinking of having it grow around the outside of our outdoor aviary. However, we will have to add some kind of lattice work for it to climb um, on the outside where the birds can't get it. I don't mind if some of the vines go against the actual cage of the aviary, the birds will destroy that. But as long as the main plant can grow on some kind of like lattice work on the outside, it should be okay. But I'm going to remove this here. This here is a type of caterpillar. It's a, oh, it's a chrysalis. Wait, oh, I thought it was a caterpillar. Okay, it's, it's a chrysalis, meaning this will hatch into a butterfly or a moth. We'll see. Let's keep that on there. All right, guys, so we have tied the tree to the top of the truck so it doesn't fall. Oh my gosh, please survive. Oh, we can transplant. We can propagate, yeah. What's butol? Seeds? seeds? Oh, wow. We can get the seeds of this and transplant it. Look at how beautiful it is. Wait a sec. These flowers look familiar. Is this like the invasive one from our garden? Oh well, because it's going in the aviary. And look, the lady gave us extra bromeliads. Thank you. This one here was the most expensive of all the plants we bought today. Even more expensive than that elastic up there. Hi puppy, yes, hi there. Uh, so cute. Hi. We're also buying more driftwood. This is the exact driftwood, um, the branches that we used for our outdoor aviary. Gonna buy all their whole stock not a lot it's like a few branches um, just to have for when we build say the iguana pen or in case we need to replace any of the branches in the outdoor aviary it'll be good to have the same kind wow guys this is it look at that it's legit gosh look at this giant pothos I would love this growing in the aviary but it's just growing here on the side of this house Gotta find a nice plant of it. Oh my gosh, they're gonna call the owner of this house to see if we could actually rip this off. The idea is we need to get as much of the like roots as possible. Cause I actually followed this pothos and it kind of gets smaller and smaller. Like see, as it gets down and then look at how small it is at the bottom. It's actually not even attached to the soil. Its roots probably are, but it's growing mostly epiphytically on this wall. So if we could somehow rip it off along with all its roots, I can manage to attach it to the side of our indoor aviary and have it grow. Look, isn't that beautiful? Imagine that growing in the aviary. Wow. And it's also good perching for any birds. I knew it! I looked at this plant and I'm like, RJ probably likes this because it's so weird looking. And turns out he's asking for the price. <laughs> I know you so well. It's actually intertwined with this huge plant here. Is this Monstera? Anyway, um, we have to kind of untangle it from the Monstera vines, the Monstera roots. But I think this we could do this. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm okay with just getting at least half, like up to here 
of this giant pothos because look it also continues down that way and then onto up there so they can still have pothos growing on their home we'll just take this particular branch yay they're gonna try to cut it now yes oh my gosh my dream giant pothos he says it took three years to grow this wow that wow salamat oh he's giving us two huge pieces wow this one got a little damage from removal but that's okay wow see look it literally was just growing on the wall it wasn't even attached to the ground really wow look at how beautiful that is my boy is quite beautiful salamat oh my gosh this is awesome wow we are really packing things in there awesome look at those long roots that's gonna be perfect of course the most expensive <laughs> plant is really in, in here with us guys we're here at another plant nursery and we saw this look at how big that fiddle leaf fig is so nice oh yeah and it's growing in a pot perfect sweet guys look we found tamarind <gasps> will it grow in the aviary i mean here it's growing in kind of partial shade oh if we can get tamarind to grow in the aviary this would be amazing and look look at the tiny pot it's growing in omg i want these two plants this one and the fiddle leaf <gasps> guys you know this plant it's called Diffenbacha. very very common house plant but it's toxic omg guys look at this look at the size of this spider do you guys see the size of that spider oops it's like get away i would love to put this in my vivarium but the web is so big it would span the entire vivarium oh the tamarind is not available maybe if i look sad enough they'll change their mind this it's paid already oh someone already bought it oh man oh what is this plant oh that's odd right where is that going the indoor aviary or the outdoor aviary let's try that's a cool plant okay. guys there's a really cool small tree right now but it's called Ali Bang Bang I think I'm gonna put this in the aviary it looks it's dwarf see it helps to speak directly with the gardeners and ask if there are any plants or trees that you need um, that aren't on display because they actually keep some in like the back of their private residences but guys we can't fit any more at the back of the truck we're gonna have to pick up the second round of trees and plants later oh my goodness look who's coming home with us too we're getting it the massive fiddle leaf fig this will be the biggest tree in our aviary wow oh my gosh guys this is my favorite vine and it's so good it's also good for like pollinators bees love this oh okay we'll get this too <laughs> Oh, we bought both the yellow and the white one. Guys, he says he's seen us on the internet. <laughs> yeah, we bought so much. Look at it back there. But guys, look, we supported local business. Now they can, you know, earn earn from their, their work, feed their families, all of that. And then we can beautify our aviary. Yay. All right, guys, we are home. These plants survived the travel. All right, Mabuhai squad, here's the aviary. Man, today is going to be a lot of work, but it's all going to be so fun. This is kind of like building a terrarium, but like large scale. This is gonna be awesome. Here we go. All right, we got a lot of the plants here. Um, now I think we need to remove the plants that we are not gonna use. So let's do that now. Luckily, the root ball stayed together. Now this, we, we've got soil in here already. Yeah. I think that's good. Are those, those are ants. Those are trap jaw ants. There are trap jaw ants in here. All right, and so this will be going in there along with this, its partner. We bought it a baby partner. All right, so we're gonna break this plastic pot so it's easy to put in. Okay, adding the second, the partner, yeah. Oh, that looks so beautiful there. All right, guys. Now, as for this precious giant pothos, I'm for now going to put it in here. 
this is our outdoor pond in a pot. Um, there's fish in there and all of that, so it'll be able to have a drink. It's starting to wilt now, so it needs some good, some good nitrates. There you go. You can rest here, my beloved, until we're ready to plant you. Okay, so this is gonna be a mission. The idea is we're gonna remove this huge branch. I wanna move it somewhere up there. And we wanna remove the bamboo, but we want to keep this awesome vine that I love. So we're just gonna untangle it now from these bamboo, which might take some time. All right, remove the tendrils. So guys, for those of you who watch the Ants Canada channel, you know this. I used it to escape my vivarium. And it's a biological safe glue. So I could use it to glue vines to a wall. You know what I mean? If I don't want to use wire. We have been using wire. There's a few like places where there are wire where the vines can latch on. But if I wanted to stick it on there, I could use this. And I think I'm going to use it at certain parts. Yay! It works like a charm. I glued this whole bunch to that rock wall. And so it can climb up this way. Yes! My vining fantasies are coming true. Success! Oh my gosh. I can't believe it took a whole year, guys, for this to establish. That's a long time. That's longer than I thought it would. But now it's on its journey to rising to the top. Yay! It's such a pretty vine. Look at it. All right, guys, we're adding the magic sauce. So I asked for everyone to collect and keep our bunny poo. So our rabbit droppings. Mmm, smells good. Along with the hay that falls at the bottom of the, their cage. Um, we're gonna mix some of that with the soil and that's gonna be awesome fertilizer for these plants. Yes. All right, that's some of the best fertilizer. Relocating the next philodendron. She, it's a she because I just, I feel it, it's a she. Look how beautiful she is. It's gonna, she's gonna be here and she's gonna climb this pillar. I think we're gonna lean it like this so it starts really climbing. It's cute. See guys, from the side, won't she look so pretty climbing that? I think so. And here we're planting another vining plant. It's a flowering vining plant. Hopefully it does well here. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. I, I look forward to this wall being alive. Yep, RJ saying we can already start sticking it on the wall so it starts climbing. Yeah, we'll use my, my glue. This pretty plant with these yellow pom-pom type flowers, we're planning on putting it here to pair it with this vine. We're setting up the scaffolding because we're gonna start working up here. Okay guys, now I left the house because I need to collect some vines. So see these vines? These will be awesome, strung around the aviary. Um, we're gonna chop some up and put them in the aviary. This will be great. Now what's interesting about these vines is they might become alive, like when they're in our aviary. So I have to really kind of watch I don't mind if vines become alive, but like we don't want them to completely take over the aviary. But look, this vine I'm holding onto right now is so long. I'm just literally pulling it out of the tree. See, it comes off so clean. Yay, this is perfect. Oh, it's huge. That's what she said. Okay, this one we need to cut at one end because it's really stuck on the ground. Tabi Tabi Po, we're asking permission from the forest spirits to uh, to take this. I'm just saying sorry. I know we're in your home. We acknowledge you're here. We're just grabbing some vines to become part of our home. This is dangerous business. We hear cracking in the trees. Okay, there. Wow, this vine is so extensive. Whoa, it's so long. Okay, yes, holy, this is like the longest jump rope ever. All right, now to place this massive piece of wood, which used to be against that wall. We are going to put it up there. We've set up the scaffolding, and I, in my mind, 
I kind of know the position that will work, but we'll really have to play with it and see how we can secure it up there. <laughs> RJ's excited being up there. Okay, so we need to stick it. Careful, careful the window. Yeah, stick it inside. Oh, it looks pretty up there. That branch that you're holding, the small one, I think needs to be attached to the wall. Something like that. Yes, something like that. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah, how can we secure that there? Okay, we might need to cut it a little bit. Yeah, stick it, fine. Oh, that looks so good, guys. What do you think? See, it looks like it's all part of one tree. I wanna see what it looks like. Guys, look at this. Oh, oh, it's perfect. Oh, oh, it's gonna be perfect. And see, like, there are no bedrooms on that corner, so it doesn't really block anyone's view. Yeah, 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 we could cut it here and then, like, secure this entire thing to this brick wall. Even by itself, it's already staying still. But we are going to add something here to keep it stuck, just for safety. See, it even stays by itself already. Perfect. So nice, see? So when we come out of the masters, birds, we could see birds right up to the window. He's gonna cut that branch. We could come here and see that branch. See? From the guest bedrooms, we can come and see that branch. It's perfect. Okay, so I just had an awesome idea. So see this long, long vine? We're gonna hang it all the way up there. <gasps> oh, this is gonna be so cool. A vine is gonna be hanging all the way from the top of the aviary. If you look, the top of the aviary has hooks. We're gonna try to get up there. All right, guys, the second round of plants just came in. <gasps> oh, this is that tree. It's like a native tree. I'm thinking it might go there. Oh, it looks so beautiful there. And you saw it was a, it was growing in shade. Oh, uh, so Okay, in the night it closes. Oh, guys. Wow. Fiddly fig, the big one. Oh, look how huge it is. Some of the top leaves got damaged during transport. Oh. But overall, I think this plant will be okay. Oh, here's the beautiful Monstera. Huge. And it comes with its own driftwood piece. Sweet. Okay, we're gonna try sticking this Monstera way in that corner. Okay, we made an executive decision. This Monstera is getting its own pot. This little tree here will have its own pot somewhere in the middle. OMG, look at the vine, guys. It's going all the way up. Wow. Holy, it's such a long vine. When we pulled it out of the tree, we didn't realize how long it was. Look, there's still a lot. This is crazy. Okay, so all of these like little thinner tendril vines, we're gonna string it through like here. So it creates a nice, nice lattice work of vines. Oh my gosh, guys, from second floor, it looks so good. <gasps> this is really looking like a jungle now. Guys, vine number two. We're also gonna hang it all the way from the top there. OMG. Now that vine looks legit. Look at it. <gasps> wow. Guys, it's nighttime. We just got back from Manila. I'm not gonna show you the aviary because it's a work in progress. I wanna show it to you when it's kind of completely done, which will probably be tomorrow. But guys, I'd like to show you our new family members. Look at them! Aren't they so cute? Okay, Sahara's going crazy. She sounds like a pig. Cause she knows there's something up here on this counter. Yes, guys. These are our new friends. So Mabuhay squad. We picked them up in Manila. These are finches. <gasps> um, and they're so cute. Okay, so let me introduce. In here, we first of all, you must know that these are all male. So we've decided that our aviary is going to be a gaviary. It'll be an all male aviary. Why? Because finches breed like rats, like mice. We, we will have hundreds if we didn't control the breeding. Well, the people we 
got these birds from suggested we only get males. We only keep a male-only aviary. So these are all males. They're different kinds of finches. So in here we have that beautiful one there is a java finch. And then these two here are zebra finches. In here are six society finches with funny hairstyles. Wait, you gotta look at them. See their hairstyles? They kind of have like, <laughs> they have like a middle part. It's so cute. And then here are some of my favorite finches. The colorful ones back there are called Goldian finches. And that one right there is an owl finch. We are gonna get him a companion. We're gonna get more owl finches in the future. It's just that um, where we got these guys, they only had one. And then they only had one Java finch available. But we're gonna expand on this flock, guys. Um, we also want to get a canary because of the song. Beautiful, beautiful bird song. But we're going to take our time picking the canary because they, they had a canary available, but wasn't sure if I was happy with that one. Um, but this is our initial flock, guys. Aren't they cute? They're young. Um, and I don't know if they can be tamed like a parrot. Like, you know our parrots, right? They land on us and all of that. They're, they're very, um, how should we say, not afraid to interact with humans. But these finches, I'm not sure. In my mind, it can be done just over time and with a lot of patience, but I don't, I don't think they're easily tamed, tameable like the parrots. But um, they're kind of okay with me being close by. This is their first day. They eat generally the same food as our parrots, except the size of their seed mix is smaller. Like, they, they can't eat the larger uh, sunflower seeds like um, the seed mix of our parrots. They also need to eat um, mashed boiled egg every other day, um, including the shell, which is cool. These will also take mealworms. So, but otherwise it's the same. Like in the mornings we'll feed them the healthy veggie mix, fruit veggie mix. In the afternoon they get their seed mix. But aren't they cute? Oh my gosh, they're gonna love our aviary. So right now they are just in their carrier cages, um, having quick bites to eat of seeds, see? Um, but I'm gonna transfer them to their quarantine cages where they'll stay for a day or so until we're finished, completely finished the aviary. But I wanted to start the bonding and acclimation process now. So that's why we got them before we finished the aviary. All right, we're gonna have dinner. Hi birds, I'm just gonna eat. I'm eating rice and egg. I know you guys eat egg. Don't worry, we're friends. The hair is going crazy. Mm. Hello. <laughs> Alright guys, I am prepping their um, like holding cages. Stick in some perches in here because this didn't come with any perches. This is actually a cage that our guinea pigs came in. But it's a good all around like general cage for things. Um, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit more homey for the birds by adding some perches. All right, there. So now I think the plan is gonna be to get the birds used to this cage um, and like continue to feed them in here and stuff. And then when we release them into the aviary, we'll also leave these doors open and this is where we'll feed them in this cage just so they still get used to coming into the cage to feed you know how we did it with the parrots in case we need to relocate them or catch them or whatnot okay sahara we get it all right guys got food and water all prepared for them and now to move them in so these cages come with a small door which is so convenient because that's how i'm going to move in the finches all right guys 
Let's do this. Let's start with the society finches. Lift this door. There we go. Okay, go. Go, go, go. Go. Yep, your new home. Go. Go, guys. Come on. Don't be shy. Go ahead. There you go. See? Yep, go ahead. No, wrong way. Sahara, stop. There we go. Awesome. There we go. Sweet. And the birds were thirsty. They're drinking water now. Okay, next, on the other side, we're going to add the other six. Look at them. They were thirsty. We were instructed not to give water till one hour after they arrived um, because apparently they could get sick. Wow, that's interesting. But it's been more than an hour, so now they're drinking. All right, next round. Let's move in the Goldian Finches and Owl Finch. Go! There you go. Go ahead. There you go. Awesome. Enjoy. Flap those wings. Flap those wings. Flap those. Flap those. Flap those wings. All right. And then three more. We've got the Java Finch and Zebra Finches. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I know. You guys know what to do. Okay, wait. Let me lift this door. Go. Go. Go ahead. Yeah. You too. Go Java. Go Java Finch. Go. Yep. That's it. Go. There we go. Success. Awesome. Guys, here are the birds. They're so cute. <laughs> go ahead, drink. Feel free to drink. I know you guys are thirsty, see? But... I love the way they look on this natural perch, like on the, on the branches. These are just driftwood that I have uh, for my terrariums lying around. Um, that, that should do for now. Actually, like these natural wooden perches are better for birds, like even parrots. All parrot owners know this. Um, just because of the varying sh shapes and angles and thickness of the, of the grip, it's better for their legs, and it's better for their feet, and joints, and muscles, and stuff. Yes, yes guys. So get used to this space. Eat here, drink here, this is your safety space. No one can touch you in this cage. Because I want you guys to know that this cage is safety. You can always come back here. So guys, these birds are still young and um, their feathers aren't their full beauty like in terms of plumage, like because they're young, they still have their baby feathers, but once that sheds, they will be much more beautiful. Even the quality of the feathers will be better. But uh, what do you guys think of them? They're cute, right? How are they doing? They're so cute. I love how they look on the wood. See Sahara? Those are our new friends. Sives? Guys, look at the birds. It looks like they're talking to each other. It looks like they're having a showdown. Society finches versus other finches. <laughs> Guys, RJ wants us to get females. He's saying that these birds are so small, we'll hardly ever get to see them. But I say we just slowly buy and until there are many. Because, I don't know, a part of me feels like if we start getting females, they will breed and we'll have hundreds and then what do we do with the babies? But, I don't know, we'll see. What do you guys think, Mabuhai Squad? Should we allow them to breed? We'll have to provide nest boxes and all of that. Good morning. The birds are up, awake, and they were singing, but they, listen, they're so cute. Birds sing in the morning, just like parrots screech in the morning. Hi guys, you have such a pretty, you have such pretty tweets. Hear them? Can't wait for you guys to 
fly in your aviary. It looks so cool so far. All right guys, so these birds have had a week to acclimatize to the weather, being outside, etc. We're moving them into the aviary with the parrots. Um, the, I wanted to keep these birds in the indoor aviary, but RJ says he doesn't like because they're kind of chickenish and they would do better outside. So they're gonna live here with the parrots. You parrots are gonna have companions. All right, these are our golden pheasants. Look at how messy they are. Hi guys. Welcome to your new aviary. Yes. Oh, the birds are like, who that? <laughs> look, at, look at the birds on at the Elsie's head. Hi guys, these are your new friends. All right, you need to get along with them. They're like, what are those? Okay, we're gonna put these pheasants on the opposite end where it's shaded, far from their cage. But, but the conures are so intrigued by the new birds. Okay, all right, pheasants. Um, today, RJ is going to go buy plants. The pheasants will need like lots of bushes here to feel safe, they can hide in, but we're going to give them freedom finally. Okay, yeah. Go, enjoy. You guys are free. The pheasants are really scared. They're young, by the way. Um, so this isn't their final color, especially him. The male turns this bright red and gold. It's gorgeous. All right, we'll let them come out on their own. We gotta wash them, wash up their bowls. There you go. Freedom. 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 Guys, look at the parrots. <laughs> These are your new cage mates, all right? Be nice. <laughs> Guys. Hi there. Is that you, Gabriella? I think so. Guys, it's so cool to see the pheasants roaming the aviary. Look at that. Oh, you guys will love this place. You guys pretty much have a mansion now, dear pheasants. And who knows, maybe in the future we'll get more pheasants. The parrots are more intrigued with the cage, guys. <laughs> so it looks like RJ planted the lemon tree here. Um, calamansi tree here and more lemon. So this is like a citrus, a citrus side. It won't completely cover the aviary. It's just a little bush, maybe, f maybe five feet tall. Um, I said to RJ, but lemon trees grow big. I've seen them. But he said here in the Philippines, they don't grow that big for some reason. Um, and then we've started planting vining plants, see? Which will eventually climb to the top if the birds don't destroy them. But something tells me they won't um, because the main plant is outside. So even if they do kill the ones trying to get up, the main plant will still stay alive. Here's another vining plant right here. Of course, here is our traveler's palm, which is just establishing now. We've reloc relocated it, so some of these leaves are kind of wilted, but it will regenerate. And then uh, this other vine plant here with white flowers. Love this plant. Once it starts vining up here and blooming all those white flowers, it'll be awesome. Here's our mulberry. Yes. See? This mulberry, Billy got to. Um, so we're gonna have to really put a fence around our mulberry trees, the plants that Billy loves to eat. But it's growing back, so I'm not, I'm not afraid. So checking up on our giant pothos, look at that. It's hard again, crunchy, like crunchy lettuce. I knew it would be with all of this poopy fish water. Um, but we'll be transferring it into the aviary. I have a couple spots that I want to test to see where it should be permanently, what looks best. But yeah, I'm going to move that in soon. Mabuhay squad, it is my greatest honor to finally reveal to you the gaviary. Yes! Look guys. Okay guys, so this here look in the middle is the fountain we chose. We still are going to probably completely redo the plants around here. These are just the old plants that we had in the aviary before. So they're just gonna be there for now. But look at the centerpiece of the aviary. It's 
A gorgeous fountain, kind of natural looking. Um, there's floating lettuce, and guess what? Inside are little guppies. See? Um, gonna build a makeshift filter there, but for now, all the waste is being eaten up by the plants. See, there they are. Look how colorful they are. Um, the birds will be able to bathe in this. They'll be even able to drink water, although we will also offer them fresh water up in places around the aviary for them to drink. Um, but guys, look. This tree, by the way, that we bought from that gentleman in the private residence is so beautiful. We did research, and it's actually called an orchid tree. And look, it's already blossoming. Pink and white flowers all on one plant. It's really loving this spot. Look, it catches the afternoon sun so nicely. Um, if you look up, you see all the plants we fastened to the wall. Vines galore, but I'll show you the vines from the second floor. You can appreciate it from the second floor. I'll show you the rest. So look at this, guys. Still room for improvement, but here is where I set up the orchid along with some sphagnum moss on this here. Obviously, this is where we put the ficus, um, the fiddle leaf fig. I've got this here holding things back because this plant, which you'll see when we enter the entertainment room, looks so good. I'm just trying to like arrange it in the nicest possible way because right now it needs, <laughs> needs work, guys. This is a work in progress. Please don't judge it right now, please. All right, then we have this purple vine, which is gonna vine this way. It's also vining there that way. Moving on, we've got these awesome creeping vines, which will fill this wall here, along with some perching space for the birds. We got the monstera, which we managed to like fasten to the wall. See it all the way up there. So right now it looks kind of funny because of the way it's been growing for all of its life. But eventually, these leaves will point upwards to the sun, hopefully. And it will con hopefully continue to climb all the way up there. I can't wait to show you all up there, guys. See our bromeliads. I've moved them to the second floor where they're going to get more light. Of course, here is the ficus elastica. And it's attached to a vine. Here, guys, is where I put philodendron and the giant um, pothos. See, it's currently got its roots and water. We're gonna plant this pothos and that philodendron together in a pot on the corner. I've spray glued the roots to the wall along with some sp sphagnum moss so it stays moist, so it can continue to get moisture. And so far, it's holding up. Leaves are crisp still. Um, I also put, like you guys saw this, look at how beautiful that is catching the light. I also put giant, uh, Pothos here, so it can climb up that way. Yes, it's planted in that planter. And so guys, this here is the current aviary. Again, still a work in progress. Still lots to do, we gotta remove the ladder. We're gonna buy a bigger pot for this tree so it kinda sits higher. It's really a jungle. Wait till we go up to the second floor, guys, watch. Okay, but I'm gonna close these doors now. I just wanted to open it to show you. It's really, like, this tree's in the way right now, but when you stand in the middle, it looks really cool. We still are going to add more plants. I think the, the aviary needs a little more color, like red, purples, blues. Arjay's gonna go to Tagaytay now to go buy different flowers and different colored plants. It needs pops of red. Like, I think it needs red dreisena or something around. And then that'll, like, tie the entire look together. But look at that. I also love this vine, which runs down the bottom. This here's the view from the side. And guys, look at the pretty view from the back, from the entertainment room. See, see these little pom-pom type plants? They're cute here. It's so cute. And we could see the birds will perch on those vines and we can watch the birds enjoying lots of perching space for those birds. Okay guys, we're up in the canopy up in the treetops. So, if you look here, first of all, bird's nest fern all the way up here. We never had plants this high before. And then the vines run from all the way down there and across down here. Look at that vining work. See, 
a wind is blowing through right now. The vines even go way back there and onto this tree. I wanted this side to be like a treetop. Like, see, if you're sitting here, it looks like we're up in the trees. Cool, right? Now, if you look from here, see, lots of perching space for the birds. Here, I'll open this. Open it. See? Doesn't that look cool? Look at it. I plan on planting plants up there too. Now if you look at the vines, there's actually... Do you see the vining flower that will crawl down there? That one is the white one. And then along this one is the yellow one. The idea is those vines will be covered in beautiful hanging flowers that will cascade down from those vines. I can't wait for them to establish. Let's open this. This is a power corner right here. See, vining this here, it's like that. That is the invasive vine. Invasive vine, it will climb that branch. I, we gotta keep an eye on that. Let's see, it's got a cool view from here too. We got these vines that go there. I wanna plant something here, a plant here. Maybe some kind of hanging plant or who knows, something needs to go here. And then if you go here, we're up in the branches, see? So much perching space for birds. And the best part is these songbirds don't chew wood. So these branches will last here. Lots of nice sun. Oh yeah, wait, I wanna show you the bromeliads. Look, we put half of the bromeliads here. See, they're getting some good sun. And then when you sit here on these chiquita stools, you can have a look at this corner. See, more bromeliads, we moved them to this corner and I think they look so cute there. Guys, I feel like my cell phone is not doing the aviary justice. But I promise you, in real life, it looks really, really cute. See, we're up in the trees now. And as soon as the birds start flying through here and perching on all of those vines, I think it'll look so beautiful. What do you guys think? This is the look from the second floor. I'm also thinking of putting some kind of big plant up there in that corner, like kind of hanging. I don't know what yet. Something that can tolerate lots of sunlight. I was thinking Peruvian fern, but that would definitely scorch in the sun. See, it's so lush now. It's so lush. And once the flowers start blooming, oh, it's gonna be so pretty. All right, I wanted to show you this beautiful vining flower. See it? Ah, oh, against the light. Look forward to it vining all the way across, all the way across there. See, here's a better view of it. There'll be lots of those white flowers just all along this vine here. And then up there, the yellow flower. See, there's one of the yellow flowers. It will vine all the way, all the way across and up. I think it'll look so, so pretty. Up there is Lady of the Night. It has these beautiful white flowers poofy flowers that come out. Um, I can't wait for that to sprout. I may remove some of these ferns up here though. I think it's a little lush. Like maybe I might remove that now that I look at it. But this entire aviary guys is gonna undergo a lot of changes over time. I'll just continue to build on it, remove things, change things around. But for now, this will be okay for the birds. Now, just a note that the finches are not exactly tropical birds. They're more of arid scrublands, grasslands, forest edge birds, but they can survive in this like forest type area. Like it doesn't hurt them in any way. I also look forward to releasing a chameleon in here and seeing if it manages to survive. A chameleon would love, love this environment. And those little songbirds will likely leave the chameleon alone. But it definitely needs red. Like I, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell RJ to buy more red, pink, anything with blue would be nice. Like a splash, splashes of red around. All right guys, so the moment of truth has arrived. Hi guys, are you ready? You ready to explore your new home? Oh my goodness, I can't believe this moment has been manifested. After how long of 
fantasizing about this and talking about it. It's finally happening guys. So I'm just letting them relax there for like the next 10 minutes or so. Have them take in the surroundings. See? Um, and then I'm just gonna open the door. OMG guys. Here we go. I'm just gonna open this. Society finches. You guys go first. Go! You're free! Oh my gosh, guys. There! Oh! Awesome! Enjoy the aviary! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, guys. I hear them, but I don't see them. They flew. Oh, there! Oh my gosh! They're like little... Oh my gosh, guys. They look like little fairies. Oh my gosh, they look like fairies. You birds look like little fairies. Yes, go use your wings. Now these birds probably have not flapped their wings as intensely as this before, because they've lived their whole lives in cages. So they'll have to build on the muscles. They're also going to have to learn window glass. Oh my gosh, so cool, I see one all the way up there. I saw them fly and touch the glass. I believe they understand the concept of glass. Um, I don't think they will die. I was more worried about the parrots because they're so heavy bodied and just the velocity of hitting the glass would, could kill a parrot. But these little birds, I don't think they'll kill themselves. Wow, because they're so cautious. They like hover like hummingbirds only because that's how they've learned to fly. See, it touches the glass, but it doesn't... Oh, it touches the glass, but it doesn't... Oh, and it landed up there. It doesn't bang into it. Um, they've learned to hover because they've lived their whole lives in small cages. But now they can actually fly the way they're meant to fly. You guys ready? It's your turn. Yes. Goldian finches, zebra finches, and java finch. And also owl finch. Go! Yep. Freedom. Yes, go. Go. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Okay, one goldian finch. There! There we go. Oh, awesome. Yes! Oh, don't land on the ground. Come on, guys. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Yay! Go on! Don't be afraid. You could do it. <laughs> it's so cautious. This is the most beautiful of all the finches. This one with the red head. I love it. We're gonna get more Goldian finches, guys. Oh my gosh, they look like, they look like fairies, I swear. Look at this one. He's like, where am I? Go ahead, fly. It's safe. Anyways, it is so cool to see them have full roam of the aviary. Look, some of them are on the floor because they're tired of flying. Like I said, they need to um, work up those wing muscles. Yes. And guys, in case you were wondering about the two toads that have been living in the aviary these past few months eating roaches, look at how fat they are. Huge. I would say they grew about 40% of the size that they were when we first put them in. Now these here are cane toads, they're invasive, so I don't know what to do with them. I don't wanna in release them into the wild after fattening them up. I think this is like a male and a female too. I mean, should we keep them as a pet? Should we put them in the other aviary? No, no, because the pheasants would like peck at these and these are toxic. They have a toxin. Mabuhai squad, let me know what you think we should do with these two toads. Let me know, cause I, I don't have the heart to kill them. Okay, for now, I'll put them in here. They should be okay there. Go, go free here. See guys, they're so low level because they're just used to perching on the ground. Oh, there's the beautiful one. I mean, they're all beautiful, but oh, what should we name this one? Let's name this one Adonis. Hi Adonis, welcome to the Gaviary. Oh, birds and trees look so good together. You look so good there, you society finch with your funny hairstyle. See? So, so cute. 
Yes. And look at them fly around. They're like little fairies. But they're going to build their wing strength by flying around over the next few days. It takes a while, guys. In terms of their cage, I'm just going to leave that there. They can try to fly back to the cage to eat if they need to. Or just perch around it. I'm glad they see it as a safe space. Um, because, again, we'll probably need to train them to be able to eat inside their cage periodically so that uh, in case we need to catch them, right? We just pull a thread, you know, the, the same old trap trick we used to do as kids. Tie a thread to the door and once they're in, pull it! Trap them in, in case we need to catch any of them. Yes! Oh, look, they're exploring! And guys, they look so dwarfed with this whole aviary. None of them are at the top from what I can see. It'll really take them a while before they can reach the top, I think. They'll need some very good stamina to get up there. Two birds are down here resting. Hi. It's okay. I won't hurt you. I'm a friend. See, I want to show them that even if I go in, I can retreat. It's so fun watching them learn where they can perch. There's the owl finch and one of the uh, zebra finches. They're communicating right now. They're like, this is cool. I love this place. Let's just fluff our feathers and preen. Groom ourselves. We need to look great on this grand occasion. There's the other Goldian finch on the giant pothos. You look superb there, my friend. Let's call this guy Mojo. <laughs> Hi, Mojo. I see some society finches there communicating. Interesting, they use their wing beats as a communication, I think. Now, just like the parrots, I think the more the birds see myself, RJ, all the team members of our home um, coming in, bearing gifts of food and all of that, and they know that they're safe, they will start to learn that we humans are actually friends. And then my hope is that we could hold up a little bowl of seeds one day and they'll all come. Wouldn't that be great? We'll see. I mean, even wild birds, some of them like chickadees, right, in Canada and US, if you hold your hand and stay still with seeds, they'll come to you. So maybe the finches will be the same. Let's hope so. Uh, there's the one Java finch. Don't worry, we'll get you friends soon. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing biting my, no, don't you dare. That's my giant pothos. Uh-oh, just kidding. <laughs> probably just doing a little nibble nibble. I don't think these birds are as destructive as parrots are. You three look so cute there in your little corner. Oh, one of the birds made it to the second floor. Yes. Who is it? Oh, it's... Which Goldian Finch is that? It's Mojo. Awesome, Mojo. I'm so proud of you. He made it all the way up here, guys. He's mind blown right now. He's like, what? This place is crazy. And look, he's pretty high. Oh, Mojo looks so good there. Mojo, you look so awesome there. He will show the other birds that it's safe up here too. Look at him. He can't believe where he is. We gotta clean that poop on the back mirror there. <gasps> Sorry, guys. Look at him. He's like, what? This is kind of neat up here. Somehow I feel like I'm meant to be here. I feel like this was what I was made for. Looking at him from here. Oh, he looks so good. You look amazing, Mojo. Now imagine when we have lots of Goldian Finches, like a whole flock of them. That'll be crazy. But Mojo, you're a pioneer. You're an OG. Oh, he looks so good. I think he's gonna try to fly higher. Maybe they'll reach the top today, who knows? Oh guys, from this side he looks good too. I feel like I'm watching birds in the wild. Let's see, let's see, from here. Oh my gosh guys, this is such a bird and aviary fantasy right now. I'm sitting on the Kenneth bloom chair and way back there I see a finch. Now imagine when we have a flock again, like 20 of these birds all on the same branch flying together. Man, it'll be crazy. Guys, changed my mind. 
going to err on the side of caution and put these anti-bird collision decals on the glass just in case. Um, we're not going to probably put as much as we did before with the parrots, but just want to put some up there as kind of a safety measure. I see the birds, if ever they touch the glass, I hear claws touching the glass, not a full up bang. Um, but in case, I don't know, one of them gets startled and does a straight line and into the glass, you don't want to lose any birds, right? So I'm going to add some stickers. We had all of these left over from the last time we used these UV anti-bird collision stickers. Um, so we're going to use these. Ew, guys, look. They're taking dirt baths. Ew, you guys do that? Um, I'll also get some sand and gravel so that they can peck at it because it helps with digestion for some birds. Just a really fine, nice gravel. Hi there, buddy. Love your hair. <laughs> look at Sahara. She's like, it's there. What is it? I don't know, but I love it. The owl finch is so easy to spot. Oh, and it's picking at that dead Spanish moss I put there. Are you gonna build a nest? I think some of these birds will nest build anyway. Maybe to attract a mate, I don't know. Look, see? <laughs> you know what's cool? I can hear the birds around. I hear them all around. I just can't see them <laughs> right away. Oh, it's so nice to see the decals go up again. They're really pretty, actually. And I think at this time, last year, they were up. So it's kind of like a throwback to have these very pretty UV decals on the glass again. Hi, guys. Hiya. I'm just hanging out, too. I'm one of you guys. Just a lot bigger. <laughs> See? They're okay. They're okay with close proximity. I won't touch you. Don't worry. Mojo's still there. He doesn't want to leave that spot. I feel like that entire branch will be an, a very popular perch for birds. Oh, it looks like someone will be joining Mojo soon. We have one of the zebra finches, I think, venturing up into the heights. Yes, go, go. All right, and Mojo made it to the vine. He's going to crawl higher and higher, I think. The thing is, it's in birds' nature not to trust, so they will just slowly make their way and touch various surfaces and learn that those surfaces are safe to perch on. Like, see, look at that. Look how cool that looks. This bird here is trying to look for a place to perch, this white one. All right, the decals look pretty there. I've missed them, see? A lot of people who first saw the decals said that it looks like the glass actually came with it. Some Canada representation. Oh my gosh, guys, our mojo made it to the top. That was fast. So for sure he's mind blown right now. Oh, he's flying to the other side. Guys, let's go up there. Hi, mojo. Hi there. Wow, you got up here pretty quick. You know, it took the birds months to find out and discover this top area. Yes, hi, mojo. You're so cute. Good job. And he's mind blown. Like, he's looking out into this world right now going, what? There's more? And I saw him fly across, so he knows you can get across as well. Oh, Mabuhai Squad, this is so, so cool. What a dream this all is. Seriously. Mojo, you know you can come here too. Doesn't he look great? I knew songbirds would be awesome here. I knew it. All right, guys, he flew over here. Hi, Mojo. You're so cute. Welcome to the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. And I hope you enjoy the gaviary. Convince all your friends to come up here. Stunning Mojo. Mojo is a stunning bird. Honestly, I could watch these birds for hours. So the birds are a lot more calm now. They've had a few hours to settle in. And good news is they know how to go back to the cage for seeds and water. Um, and some seeds fell to the ground, so they're pecking at the ground, these birds here. But I believe the birds will be okay. They're a lot more calm now and settling in quite nicely. We've placed the cage on a sort of table. That'll be better. Yes, guys. Hope you like your new aviary. 
All windows now have decals on the second floor and first floor. And all is set now. I can even watch the birds from this end. I'm going to try to go slowly so they don't freak out. Hi guys. Hi there. Yes, I can see you from here too. All right, checking up on the outdoor aviary. And one thing I noticed, RJ put the three, remember the three water fountains that used to be in the indoor aviary that we kind of put away in storage? We're going to put them here. But I don't think they're going to be fountains here. I think here they're going to be for plants. It looks so good there. It's like it was made for this aviary. And just wanted to check up on the pheasants. And they're just here hanging out. Okay, yes, guys. These birds are so, like, noisy. They're happy to see me, I think. Um, but the pheasants are hanging out here in this corner. Right beneath that pepper plant. Gosh, watching the birds fly laps is so satisfying, guys. I love this aviary for them. Yay, look who's come down from the heights. Yes, it looks like Mojo is able to fly down. Yes, now he's probably hungry. He's probably trying to make his way all the way to the bottom so he could eat with the rest of the flock. I'm so happy for him. Oh, exploratory flight. Hi, Mojo. You could do it. On your way down. So cool seeing him on that vine. Awesome. He looks so good. Oh, he went to the middle vine. So good. Just a little bit more. He's looking at the food. He's like, I'm almost down. He's gonna fly down. What a skilled flyer he is. Out of all of them, hunger is driving him now. And all of us are watching, <laughs> me and the dogs. Oh, they. He looks so cool there. It's so awesome observing the birds from up here. They look so good. That's exactly why I put these vines here for them to perch on. Exactly like that. Come on, go down. There's so many seeds there. There he goes. Oh, <laughs> he flew to the next vine down. It's going in baby steps. Yay, there he goes. He made it to that perch and just a little bit more and he'll make it to the cage so he can eat with everybody else. He's probably starving. And there he goes. Congrats, Mojo. So proud of you. Enjoy. <laughs> Gosh, I love these birds so much already. All right, Mabuhai squad. OMG, it has been such a long, adventurous vlog. But guys, another dream has come true completely revamped the aviary. It's as lush as I wanted it to be in the first place. Um, again, it'll look better than this, guys. Please forgive me. It's just rough right now. It's a work in progress. But it's so good to see the birds already flying in there. That's a dream come true. How long have we been talking about revamping this aviary and turning it into a songbird aviary? Forever! Um, and it's just gonna get better. We're gonna add more birds, different kinds of birds, beautiful birds, and the flock will expand. Why? Because personally, I feel like birds are angels and they're good luck and I love them so much. So guys, if you enjoyed today's long vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. I know you guys have been doing that. Thank you, thank you so much. And Mabuhai Squad, if you haven't yet, do hit the subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai Squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Stay tuned for more on this aviary here on our vlogs. Love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next vlog. I'm just going to sit here and watch the birds. Bye. Mm -hmm.